Jason Ramsky. Teddy covers with the NFC East preview. We're going to talk season wins for the four teams out of the NFC East. Just a reminder, the NFL season win report, my NFL season win report, comes out next Tuesday, June 20th. We're not screwing around. We're not waiting for the markets to make all the good bets into mediocre bets. We're getting it out early this year, June 20th, noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. on the East Coast. Make sure to get on board with that season win report, 97 and 47 over the lifetime of that report. And that report, again, every year since 2001, it's come out 15 and 4 with the big tickets. It's been good. It's one of the best reports that I do. And that's why we hype it up and promote it with previews like this. Let's talk a little NFC East. And I like to start these division previews with two opinions. Out of the four teams, I'm giving you two opinions. I'm going to start here. First opinion is going to be Washington under. <laughs> you know, when it comes to a season wins, look. The Commanders, they're lined only six and a half over minus 120. They went 8-8-1 eight, eight, last year, so I'm expecting some regression. I'm expecting more than some regression for Washington. I thought they overachieved last year. Ron Rivera, veteran head coach. Eric Bieniemy, veteran OC, making his first uh, trip east after being uh, coaching for Andy Reid in recent years. He didn't get the head coaching gig that he wanted. He's trying a new gig here in Washington. Jack Del Rio is the D.C., another veteran guy. So from a coaching staff standpoint, lots of experience for Washington. It'd be interesting to see how Bieniemy performs without Patrick Mahomes. As his quarterback, it's likely to be Sammy Howell at QB this year. And I got all kinds of concerns about Sammy Howell. The number one <laughs> is probably the fact that the quarterback for North Carolina last year, Derek May, was every bit as good or not better than he was. So those are things that certainly concern me. And obviously, you know, if you're trying to put Trot Carson Wentz out there, you have Jacoby Brissett uh, as a possibility. There's nothing good. There are no good options. Washington has issues in the secondary. Their cornerbacks are dicey. I've got issues. Uh, with the linebacking core. The offensive line was a bottom feeder unit last year. They, yeah, they signed Ian Wiley and Nick Gates. I don't think it's an elite unit yet. I don't love the tight end position. I don't love the defensive tackle position. Schedule-wise, again, AFC East, NFC West for the NFC East teams. There are three extra games. Denver, Chicago, Atlanta, three teams who are all going to be better than they were last year, I think. They have four or five on the road in October, November, then another two-game trip in December. A week 14 bye, very, very late for the Commanders. One Thursday night game, no Sunday night games, no Monday night games. The league is trying to bury this team with a new owner and a head coach who's been around for a while. Yeah, we're going to do anything with the Commanders. We'll play them under the total. When it comes to the Philadelphia Eagles, probably look the other way. I mean, this team... <laughs> They won uh, 14 games last year. The Lions at 11 and a half wins this year. Nick Sirianni does have a pair of new coordinators. Not really concerned about the new coordinators. As a, it was an expected move, Brian Johnson, their QB coach from last year, is a new OC. He had a couple of interviews elsewhere. So he's not someone that they're really, they had options. <laughs> and they chose to promote from within, uh, who replaces Shane Steichen, uh, who is now the head coach of the Colts. Um, on the defensive side of the ball uh, for Philadelphia, Jonathan Gannon, the new head coach in Arizona. They brought in Sean Desai. Uh, he has roots with the Bears and the Seahawks at the NFL level in recent seasons. So certainly when you lose both coordinators, is a concern. And when we look at the schedule for Philadelphia, it's definitely a concern. You know, they faced AFC East and NFC West foes with three extra games. Minnesota, Tampa, KC. Minnesota is supposed to be worse. Tampa's going to be worse. KC, still elite, but from a three extra standpoint, it's not brutal. They have a week 10 bye. That's perfect. Right in the middle of the season. Four out of six at home, November and December. They have two two-game road trips, both one game in the West Coast, one game in the East. That's not optimal, but it's not a disaster either. Two Sunday night, two Monday night, one Thursday night game. The league is interested in promoting uh, Philadelphia. And when we look at this roster, I mean... <laughs> There aren't a lot of holes. It's a very well-crafted roster. There's depth. The lines look really good. There's skill position talent. You have an emerging young quarterback who's still on a cheap deal. Yeah, Philly's the class of this division. Um, 11 and a half over is the only way to look. 
with the Eagles, although 11 and a half, hard to bet those 11 and a half over the total. We look at the other two teams in the division, Dallas, nine and a half to the over. I'm seeing minus 155, minus 160. Uh, Dallas, the market's expecting them to win 10 games. Remember, between 45 and 50 cents worth of juice equates to a half win. So uh, nine and a half over minus 160 equates to a 10 mathematically, uh, minus 110 either way. New offense coordinator for Dallas, Mike McCarthy, returns his team went 12 and 5 last year. Kellen Moore is out. Brian Schottenheimer is in. I'll view that as a net negative. Dan Quinn returns his defense quarter. Look, Quinn beat me last year. That defense was phenomenal last year. Really overachieved. And I'll give Dan Quinn credit, a guy who I thought may have wore out his welcome as a DC. Did a great job with this team last year. They traded for Brandon Cooks to compliment C.D. Lamb. Look, there's plenty of skill position talent for Dallas. The question is how good uh, Dak Prescott can be. Uh, this year. Some concerns about the quarterback position, some concerns about the linebacking position. They did resign Lane, Lane, uh Vander Esch, but Dallas does look pretty good. They look like a nine or 10 win team, which is exactly where they're priced. The NFC East teams again face AFC East and NFC West opponents. Dallas is three extra. They play the Chargers, the Panthers, and the Lions, two of those three tough. They have six primetime games. The league wants the Cowboys to be good again this year. Two two-game road trips, both tough. They play San Fran and the Chargers, and then play Buffalo and Miami in December, all on the road. And a fairly early week seven bye, that's not optimal. The clients and I cashed a ticket with the New York Giants over their win total last year. I don't think I'm going to do it two years in a row with the G-Men. They went nine and seven last year. A lot of things broke right for them to go nine and seven. This year, line seven and a half wins. Mike Kafka back as the offense creator. Brian Dable back as the head coach. Wake Martindale. Interviewed elsewhere, but he's back as a DC. This is a team, again, you know, Daniel Jones was pretty good last year. There are concerns about the skill position talent uh, for the G Men. There are concerns uh, about the, the offensive line. I don't love the back seven on defense, to be perfectly honest. I don't love um, the pass rush <laughs> for the Giants. I've got like, defensive concerns for the G Men. They look to me to be a pretty mediocre team. Uh, AFC East, NFC West. The two divisions they face are three extra games. The Raiders, the Packers, the Saints, all of whom are expected to be anywhere from mediocre to pretty good this year. Not a brutal trio. Before the bye, they have two two-game road trips and a three-game road trip. <laughs> Seven of ten on the road from week two to week 11. That's tough. Then another two-game trip in December. They do have two Monday night, two Sunday night, and a Thursday night game. So the league doesn't want them to be awful necessarily. They're relevant. But Let's not forget three of those TV games out of the five are in the first four weeks of the season. Look, the Giants' schedule from a situational standpoint isn't good, and this team did overachieve last year, and they do have major question marks, in my mind, on both sides of the ball. I don't like Washington. I don't like the Giants that much either, but seven and a half. I doubt I get to the under with the G-Men at that number. There's your NFC East preview. Thanks for watching, and remember, check out that season win report coming out next Tuesday, the 20th of June. Make sure that you can get the best of the number for making your NFL future wagers for the upcoming campaign. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the games, and good luck.